just come right on lb.com. Hey there, did it, uh, did it feel like a year or did it feel like just yesterday that you were out there? <laughs> um, you know, I've kind of said all along the timing for spring training hasn't really been any different. Um, not playing the games in, in the middle was obviously different, but, um, you know, being down here February into early March, having, having the timeline of knowing just when to be ready. I mean, that was all normal. So everything feels good and just got to continue to, to work toward, you know, end of March, into April and be ready to go. What did you see on that home run and how fun was that little hitting spree you guys went on? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, C-Shook's not, not an easy guy, easy guy to face. So I thought we had a bunch of good at-bats before that as well. Uh, I was just happy to kind of see some pitches, get into a couple good hitting counts. Um, you know, seeing a sidearm righty is good good for me this early. You know, just kind of simplify things and got to a 3-2 count and he's kind of hung a slider and just put a good swing on it. Jesse Dockerty, Washington Post. Hey Ryan, um, you were a young third baseman at one point. Um, now you're playing with one across the way. So. He made one really nice play from the hole. You made the pick. Um, also, just like a really comfortable play early on. What have you seen of his development uh, defensively? I know this time last year we were talking about it a lot more, but it seems like he's kind of settled in there. Yeah. Um, like I said, I I paid attention last year, but didn't <laughs> right. really closely pay attention. But I feel like he played pretty pretty solid defense last year. And I mean, that's mm -hmm. at that position, you just need to make the routine plays. Um, it's such a tough position. A lot of it's so much just reaction and, you know, you get to a lot of balls and people then don't realize how long of a throw it is to get it all the way across the diamond. So it's a, it's a, it's a tough position. And I think he has proven that he can make all the routine plays and then, um, you know, to be able to do anything extra is always good, but yeah, he looked good today. Uh, you know, he works, he works at it. I think the more he plays and the more he kind of gets comfortable over there, the better he's going to get. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, me and Josh tell all those guys, just get it over there. If it's, you know, if it's in the dirt, it gives us a chance to, to help him out. And like you said, it was a tough play to his backhand and a long throw. So, um, yeah, he looks good and he's just going to continue to get better. From your experience, when you first came up, you, um, sorry, the PA announcer here is screaming. Um, when, when you first came up, like you said, it's a position where you want to make, you want to make the routine plays, but I'm sure as a young guy, you want to make every play. So do you kind of have to like recalculate your brain at all to be like my own expectations for myself maybe are you know too high? I don't know. How do you kind of come up at that position like that? No, I mean, I think you learn yourself. Everyone's different. You know what you're good at, you know, um, you know, what, what plays challenge you the most. And then, and then it just becomes kind of risk versus reward calculation. Um, a lot of that's done before, before the ball is hit. Um, but going back to, you know, having a first baseman, that's what, you know, me and Josh have been talking this week as well. I think being on the other side, like I have, you realize how nice it is to have a couple guys over there that are big targets right. that can save you. Um, you know, if the ball's off the base or if they try and make a tough play and instead of trying to make a miraculous play on our end, you know, we get off the base, and obviously save them the error, but more importantly, save the guy from going to second base. Right. You know, that then gives them more confidence to try and make plays that, maybe they wouldn't have in the past. So it's a team effort. Um, you know, you want them to be comfortable doing whatever they want and, and throwing the ball over there, knowing that we're going to do everything we can to obviously help them get the out. But if they try and make a really difficult play and it's offline, you know, to get off the base, do the job, keeping it in front of us. And I think when both sides start to work together like that, you see, you see production um, kind of soar, I guess. Thanks, man. Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, uh, just physically, how did you feel after playing three innings, taking two at-bats the way you normally would at, at the end of your first, you know, three innings of a spring training game? Right. Uh, no, I mean, I feel good. I'll be sore like I always am. I think um, you can't mimic, you know, they had all right-handers in their lineup, so I'm playing as far over in the four hole as I can. I mean, you can't mimic the sprint to first base or there's a couple foul balls near our dugout that, I had to run full speed over there for. Um, so that's the good thing about these first week to 10 days in these games is you get that sort of soreness out. Um, you can train as hard as you want. You can be in the best shape, whatever you want to say, until you get, you know, 
a few of these four or five inning games under your belt and then you kind of stretch it out to like that six seven inning and then that kind of goes away so it's I mean the results are great but I think more importantly it's it's getting your body ready and going through kind of your pregame routine that I've always talked about and mentally sort of getting back into that rhythm that's the most important part for me the first 10 days to two weeks yeah um, because your role is probably going to involve more pinch hitting than you're used to this year and coming off the bench. Is there anything you can do to try to simulate that this spring? Would you like take one at bat later in a game at some point? Is that, is that something you guys have talked about? No, I mean, I think the hardest thing with, and I, the hardest thing with that and why it's so hard for younger guys to do it and be successful at it, not that they can't, but you know, I've faced so many of these guys before. I think that's a huge advantage kind of knowing knowing what they're going to throw um, a lot, of, especially in our division, a lot of these guys, I have tons of at bats off of. So coming in off the bench, it's it, nothing's going to really be surprising. Um, and then, you know, if I'm not starting that day, I'm still going to do whatever I would have done to prepare to play. If, if I was starting, I'll just move it back to probably the third or the fourth inning. And so I'm not too worried about that. And I don't, I don't think it, I mean, I haven't talked to Davey, but I don't know if we'll, have me pinch hit at all I'm not too worried about you know coming off the bench or getting one at bat or, or anything like that Howard Fendrich Associated Press hey Ryan uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, fact that MLB is going to allow players to look at uh, iPads in the dugout um, to watch video during games I'm wondering is that something that you think you'll do a lot and how, how can that be helpful? Yeah. I mean, I think video has been a huge part of the game. I, I think last year, maybe they weren't allowed to do it or I, I'm, I'm not positive on what the rules were. Um, you know, I think a lot's been said about video rooms and how people, well, some people incorrectly use them. Uh, but I mean, I think, it, you know, I think we've kind of handled that situation. I think, you know, having the delays with the live feeds and, and things like that allow you to basically squash all that stuff. Because, uh, you know, I think hitters and pitchers honestly use video during the game and it gives us the best chance to, to be successful and it gives us the best chance to basically put the best product on the field. So I think, you know, things like that that help us perform better uh, I think should be able to be used. Obviously, you safeguard for the small percentage of people that used it incorrectly and to the detriment of the game. And I think, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of people doing that. I, I, maybe I'm naive. I don't, I don't know. But um, for me, I think the risk of that happening for the reward of us being able to use the video, um, you know, you put your safeguard measures in place. And then I think, you know, I think we should be able to use it. So, you know, I think it's good for the game. I think it's good for us. And um, yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to see where a pitch was. You just want to see, you know, what your swing looked like. A lot of guys are very dependent on it. I mean, I use it. I wouldn't say I use it a lot or all the time. There'll be games where I go, you know, where I don't use it. But, you know, it's just nice to have if you want to go check something out. They say the um, supposedly the way they're going to do it is obscure somehow the catcher signals. And then when you're looking at it during a game. Yeah. I mean, see. you know, if people are going to get the signs, they're going to get the signs. I mean, that's why they're called signs. You should have better signs, I guess. But, uh, you know, I guess if you're starting to use computer programs and algorithms, that's a different, I'm, I'm too old for that stuff. That's way over, that's way over my head. I don't even have social media or anything. I don't know how to use that stuff, but, uh, you know, I guess if people are doing that, obviously, I mean, couldn't you just blur the catcher's fingers out or something like right. that? Yeah, that's what they're going to I mean, try. I think, you know, to completely shut down in a positive thing for a lot of players just because of something like that, there's got to, I mean, it's 2021. There's got to be a way to, got to be a way to let us use video without worrying about catcher signals. signals. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. Maria Torres, The Athletic. Hey, Ryan, um, I'm just curious from your perspective, what, what have you thought about um, this specific group of guys that you've got together? Um, how does it compare to the 2019 group and what have you kind of just, what are your impressions so far? 
Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, a lot of the guys I'm just just continuing to get to know. So it's still pretty, pretty new. But, um, you know, a lot of veteran guys, which is very similar to what we had in 2019, um, sort of that veteran. Uh, a lot of these guys have sort of done everything you can in the game. And then you mix that with still the really young core group of guys that we have, you know, Victor and Juan and uh a bunch of the other guys as well. So uh, a lot of our young pitching prospects are here right now too, which, you know, those guys look really good, which um, it's exciting to see, gosh, I mean, over four five, six to these guys that are, you know, you hear a lot of times about prospects and then unfortunately you watch them throw and you're kind of like, eh, I, you know, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to name anyone. Cause you know, it's not, you, you know, I just feel like sometimes you read about these guys and then it's a little underwhelming, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And to have five, six, seven guys where you've read about them and then you watch them throw and they actually live up to what they're supposed to be. It's kind of exciting. So it's been cool to have like that youth, in camp uh, along with, you know, I didn't get to meet Josh Harrison last year that much. See Jordy Mercer, uh, you know, Schwarber and Lester obviously have been around. Josh Bell's been in the big leagues for five or six years. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people, but, you know, to have that group of veteran guys that have sort of been and been there, done that with everything you can imagine mixed with that young group, it, it's very reminiscent of 2019. Is there like one player um, or maybe like the strides that one player has made since between like last spring training and now that you kind of didn't get to see because you weren't there over the summer? Um, I'm trying to think. I, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to say Juan, but, you know, I think he, he's, you know, watching him last year and the year he had um, talking to him a little bit this first week or so. Um, you know, you, you feel kind of silly saying him, but it has been pretty impressive to see what he's done in such a short time. And I think the scary thing is how much better he could still get. Um, but to watch him, how he handles it, to watch his work ethic, um, and that's part of our job is to keep him like that. Uh, I don't think it'll be too hard, but, um, you know, we've had a lot of guys who have been really good at a young age, and it's you know, it's important to keep, I guess, the same demeanor characteristics uh, that got you here. And I, like I said, I don't think we'll have, a, he'll have a problem doing that, but it's kind of our job to kind of do that with him. But it's been, it's been fun to watch him. Thank you. Yep. Dave Preston, WTOP. Ryan, a few weeks back in the clubhouse for you here in West Palm Beach, uh, what did you miss the most not being in the clubhouse last year during the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's what I missed the most, not being around the guys. Um, you know, the game is always fun, but I think the winning together, um, you know, when someone does something, makes a mistake on the field or, you know, goofs up a little bit, you know, I guess wearing them out, wearing, you know, looking for that kind of stuff and, um, the competition of being on the field, you against the pitcher, that sort of stuff, just things that I don't want to say you took them for granted because you, you obviously appreciate it, but not having it for, you know, four months um, really made me realize how much I do love it. So I think just being back, uh, joking around, um, just being around the game, I guess, has, has, been, has been the most fun. And off the field, how important is mentoring in the clubhouse for you at this, at this point? And was there a mentor way back when, when you were coming up that really helped you, whether it was on the field, off the field, or just in being a player? Yeah. I mean, you know, we all have kind of, I, was, I mean, I had a, a pretty veteran group that first September in 05, Vinny Castilla, Brian Schneider, Nick Johnson, Royce Clayton, um, a bunch of guys that had played in the big leagues for a long time. So, you know, it's not so much, making you change or making you not be who you are. It's just, you know, the little things that, um, you know, you're allowed to say the things that maybe a coach wouldn't. It just, it, it, it always means more when it comes from a player compared to a coach. And, and Davey has always said, and all the coaches, I mean, it's our clubhouse, it's our job to, to kind of teach these guys how to 
obviously behave where you're here, but I think what you said off the field too, I think more importantly, almost off the field with as much, you know, I don't want to say trouble that they can get in now, but with as much access as people have to players, um, you know, one bad decision or not even one bad decision, just one, you know, decision that turns into people making it a bad decision can be very distracting. So I think, you know, you have to be together you have to work together as a team on and off the field. And part of that involves making good decisions off the field. And, you know, that's this veteran, veteran group's job to kind of steer those guys in the right direction.